I knew it was time for me to find a way to do what I initially wanted to do, and that was to ultimately create something for myself to perform in. You know, wasn't sure how I was going to do that. You know, um, and at the time, um, I signed a, a deal with NBC. Um, and I ran a Whoopi Goldberg show. Uh, she had a sitcom for a short time, and I was developing pilots at the time. I had a pilot that didn't go, but I was very excited about it. It was so much fun. I got to work for Jim Burroughs, and it was a multi-cam. SUV? Yeah, it was Beverly Hills SUV sport utility vehicles. <laughs> and it was a show about a car dealership, and it was so much fun to do. Um, Great experience and it got good laughs. Didn't make it. I think NBC only picked up two comedies that year. It was it was in the year when comedies were really just at its nadir. You know, um, it took a while for them to come back on television. It, it happens. It's one of those cycles of TV. You know, um, so we didn't get on. So NBC uh, put me on The Office because uh, uh, they were bringing that uh, to the states from Britain where it was a hit. Nobody quite knew about it here. It hadn't really taken off yet. I think some people were aware of it. Uh, funny, we were talking about this earlier. I knew about The Office from years earlier. When I was doing the Bernie Mac show, I went to England to do this like symposium on sitcoms. It was something like that. And I showed the pilot of the Bernie Mac show, and I saw uh, an episode of The Office, which I hadn't heard of. And there was a producer, his name's Ash, Ash Atalo is his name. I think he was in a wheelchair. And um, he was very nice, and we were talking about our shows and kind of praising each other. He said, Larry, the Bernie Mac show is so fantastic. I'm like, The Office, this is great, you know. And both of our shows were single camera, you know, it was this type of thing. And, and he said, look, can you do me a favor? Don't let them take this to the States and, you know, just ruin like this. I'm like, no, of course. I'm probably doing a horrible accent of his. He probably sounded nothing like this. I'm imagining what the English accent is. <laughs> and I said, no. I said, I said, look, if I have anything to do, that, I'll tell you this. If they did try to do that, I'll have nothing to do with it. Smash cut to me working on The Office with Greg Daniels, you know. Um, Greg, who's brilliant, Greg is one of those just genius persons who, it, you don't even want to try to figure out how his brain works. You just appreciate that, that he's around and does what he does. Um, and so The Office was a very cool experience. I was a consulting producer on it. Um, and as I was doing it, my job was to kind of still figure out a sitcom to do. So I was developing shows while I was on The Office, and I was trying to figure out a show that I could do for myself. Mm -hmm. So that was, that's where I, with The Office served as that transition where I was trying to figure out what to do for me. And so the show that I pitched to NBC that I got to write, which is one of my favorite scripts, and years later, uh, people that had read the script used to mention it, it was called uh, Fat Man, Skinny Wife. And uh, it was kind of my take on the sitcom world. It was like me as a showrunner of this black sitcom uh, <laughs> and that typical fat man, skinny wife kind of setup that I always saw these shows, you know. And uh, it was kind of a deconstruction of, of working on that show. It was really my experience as a Bernie Mac show and that type of thing. And uh, kind of a behind the scenes type of thing. Unbeknownst to me, at the same time, they were developing 30 Rock and the Sunset Strip thing that Aaron Sorkin was doing, which were all behind the show kind of looks at things. So, so NBC uh, uh, picked those to develop, and I tried to shop it somewhere else. Fox, ironically, almost picked it up, but didn't. So it was something that didn't end up going. But while I was at the office, I was you know a writer on the show, consultant, and that type of thing. And the second episode we were doing was Diversity Day. Uh, and uh, we had so much fun coming up with ideas for The Office, I remember during that time. And um, the diversity consultant, somebody, I can't remember if it was Greg, said, Larry, you should play that part. And I said, no, I don't want to play that. Because in my mind, I hadn't really, I think, made the, the real connection that, oh, maybe this is the way that I start the transition. You know, I, I was there to work on that show and serve that, you know, serve Greg. And remember, I've always, I've never had a problem trying to, you know, force myself on camera or, or create that space. And I'm a big supporter of actors should get the roles and not people in the show shouldn't be hoggy and take those roles from, there's actors working out there who should be getting roles, you know. <clears throat> so, um, 
So many times I would read parts during table reads of shows that I'm on when actors can't there because I'm an actor myself and I do impressions, I could do characters and like we do the PJs, I could do all the characters. So if actors weren't there, I could do any character on the show at the table read. So it was always fun, you know, it didn't matter if somebody didn't show up, you know, whether it was the cricket, you know, or the cricket, Mario, you know. Um, so, um, so when I'm at a table read for a show, I would always be the one to pick up parts for actors that weren't there. So they, uh, Greg said, well, look, read the part. I think it was either Greg or Ken Quapis that said, if I would read it at the table. And when I read it at the table, of course, I killed in it, you know. <laughs> and they said, well, you have to do it. I said, look, at least bring some actors in to audition for it. And if no one get, if you don't feel anyone's right for it, then fine. I thought, they, I think they brought in one person, and then Quapis said, Larry, you should just do it. I said, okay, I'll do it. Not that I was being difficult, but I just thought, you know, I'm not here to be taking roles from actors, you know. So, I but I like to be performing again, though, on screen. But, but I hadn't quite made the real connection. Yeah. Even though I thought it, it didn't dawn mm. on me that that would be an opportunity to start. Mm. You know, that hadn't really dawned on me, you know. And in, but then when I did it, it was so much fun. And I thought, okay, you should be doing this again, you know. And and to be working with Ken Quapis, you know, I had that other relationship with him as, you know, as a producer. Now I get to be an actor in something that he does, which was fantastic. Working with Steve Carell, you know, we're, we're improvising and all that stuff. And that great cast that nobody knew yet, you know. Mm -hmm. Working with all of them was so much fun, you know. So it told me that, yes, you should start doing this again. Now is the time.